have no job here. This is really uh, the NRM 1986 when we come from the bush. We told you that this is a, this will make you fail, you the Africans. And some people thought we were just talking. But now you can see the chaos that has been going on in many of the African countries, Mali, Niger, all those countries, is partly due to this problem. Museveni, who encouraged Ugandans to embrace locally made products, promised to make the investment climate more friendly. So I'm glad that these investors have responded and we are going to make Uganda even more investor friendly because we have been patiently attacking the ignorant, those who don't know. We have been attacking them, attacking them, not by beating them, but, but, but verbally and, and with, 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 with reasoning. And I think now they are, they are, they are beginning to get the message. Now here, these manufacturers have solved a number of, of our problems. They are addressing the issue of the ceramic tiles, aluminium, uh, aluminium parts, the sanitizers. The modern group chairman pledged to introduce more investments, including steel manufacturing something the president welcomed. We also started preparations to invest 200 million US dollars to set up iron ore steel plant in Muko. We took the iron ore samples to Austria and the results came out perfect. Now that, now what we need is to start work in the work is a license to extract the ore and land to set up a plant. It is our prayer, your excellency, that this license is issued quickly and land in Muko is provided such that we can start work on that and Honorable David Bahati has been really supportive of us to scout the land and uh, the iron ore in that area. That iron industry will solve a lot of problems. We are importing a lot of iron. I think the, when I looked on, on the figures, it was like $300 million per year for Uganda and $2.5 billion for East Africa. So therefore, I want to assure you we are going to work patiently for all those things like the five cents you are talking about per unit for manufacturers. We shall achieve it, although there were some mistakes made by some people, but we shall sort them out eventually. This new modern tile factory is projected to save the country huge sums of money in importation of such products. This group produces 40,000 square meters of tiles per day. It is the biggest in East Africa. And we are going to rationalize the whole chain, transport chain. Because I was talking to Ashish, this business of using uh, rail uh, uh, trucks to bring raw materials from Mombasa or from Tanga to Uganda is not a, is not a smart way. There is the railway, the railway from Mombasa all the way to Chisumu. And then from Chisumu, by water, this God has created a lake for us here. By water, I was telling him, and Mwebesa knows, only Mwebesa knows, all the way to, by water to Nshunjezi, through River Kajera. River Kajera. I want them to look at that route. Its activities started about 16 months ago with laying of the first brick. From this factory alone, we are going to save uh, Uganda $78 million. We import in the country over 
150 million dollars worth of tiles. As you know that they make uh, 40 million tons of, of tiles and it's the biggest in the whole of East Africa. We are also focusing on the export market uh, to uh, uh, increase the uh, forex reserve of the government. So these tiles are only, not only for domestic market but they are for export market also. It is one of the recently established factories in the central district of Buikwe in Njeru Municipality. Henry Okrut, UBC. Another Vice President, Jessica Alupo, has said Uganda has made progress in documenting tenure rights through massive landing, land titling initiatives under the Milo system. She was officiating a conference uh, on effective land management, climate change and other land-related issues reflecting the region organized by the Ministry of Land, Housing and Urban Development, the Intergovernmental Authority on Development and the International Development Law Organization. Across the region, to manage this essential resource effectively, it remains crucial to us in the region to devise measures towards reducing land conflict and improve on securing land rights so as to spur sustainable development. Tenor security supports sustainable economic development by allowing for productive land investments. It is an enabling factor for improved agricultural production and increasing food security. It is important that we put in place measures to ensure sustainable land use to prevent encroachment on protected areas like wetlands, forest reserves, ETC. This requires adequate and inclusive land laws and policy frameworks, capable and legitimate institutions for allocating land and resolving disputes. Access to justice for those seeking to protect their land rights. Empower communities and spaces for dialogue to allow civil society and other stakeholders to voice their views and concerns. The land information system has been a basis for propelling efficiency and curbing of fragmentation, which is a big problem in Uganda. Additionally, Government has instituted strategies geared towards increasing public awareness and vigilance of the legal provisions of the land laws. I would like to commend our neighboring countries for maintaining a cordial relationship with Uganda, which has ended harmony and limited transboundary and cross border conflicts in England and ESC member states. and productive deliberation. I trust that the resolutions from this conference will aid in the formulation of policies, laws, regulations, and interventions which promote the social economic transformation of our countries. I thank you. That is the message which the President sent me to present to you. I say this for God and my country. Meanwhile, police has urged relatives of the victims of last night's fire at Salama School of the Blind and Deaf to be patient as it conducts DNA tests in order to ascertain identities of the deceased. According to police, the 11 victims of the fire were burned beyond recognition. Meanwhile, government has promised to support the deceased relatives, meet burial expenses, and restore the destroyed infrastructure. A somber mood engulfed Salama School for the visually impaired this morning following the death of 11 children in a midnight fire. 
The residents of the area can be seen in small groups pondering on what might have caused the deadly fire. About a dozen police officers from the forensic unit can be seen combing the scene, trying to get clues that will ascertain the cause of the fire. Yeah, the victims were burned beyond the recognition. Others don't have legs, others don't have uh, their hands. So we are going to do a DNA. We shall do a DNA to determine which kid belongs to whom. And that's when we shall hand over the kids. Uh, the bodies for burial, but at the moment we are going to do a DNA on the bodies. But we want to appeal especially to the parents to be patient. I know some of them are impatient, they want their bodies, but they should be patient as we do our investigations. Police spokesperson, Kampala Metropolitan, Patrick Onyango says, upon being alerted of the fire, a fire brigade unit was immediately deployed, but on reaching the school, the fire had already caused significant damage. Uh, we got when uh, uh, 11, 11 pupils, 11 kids, had already perished, had already died, and six were critically injured and rushed to, uh, to, to the hospital. Right now, uh, we are doing forensic analysis. The State Minister for Education, Joyce Moriku Kaduchu, was among government officials who visited the school to ascertain its current state and condole with the affected family members and the school management. The third point is for children who are seriously injured, critical admitted. Others are um, sold by grace of God were discharged, but others are taken for further treatment. And those are also children that I want to pledge our commitment as government, as ministry. We will try as much as possible to extend support to ensure their speedy recovery, their full recovery from the hospitals wherever they are. Accompanied by Katie Lamaro, the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Education and Sports, Moriku conveyed the condolence message from the First Lady, Janet Museveni, who is also the Minister of Education and Sports, whom she said is out of the country on official duty. The head teacher, Francis Chinowi, could only manage a few words. The appeal to government and well wishes to help them make the lives of the disabled children under their care more comfortable and safer through financial assistance and also appealed to government not to close the school. Uh, we have lost children and our children have really saddened us. It's good you have declared that the school should not be closed and indeed that's our wish. Help us cancel the children. Help us cancel the parents, help us cancel even the teachers, because the teachers are also traumatized. These children were their children. The men and women who teach in this school were fathers and mothers to these children. So the state they are in is that state of a father and mother losing a child. And we should sympathize with them. Before the deadly fire, Salama School of the Blind and Visually Impaired, which sits on a 36-acre piece of land, had 75 children under their care. Salama is a Swahili word that means safety, but that wasn't the case at the Salama School for the Visually Impaired and Blind. Last night, fire guarded the dormitory located right behind me, killing 11 children and leaving six of them critically injured. Dennis Igoa for UBC News in Chisoga, Mukono. And another tragic incident has engulfed residents of Chirinya Vigo village in Bunamwaya, Wakiso district, following the death of a couple in the area. Salongo Nsubuga and his wife Nalongo Anet Nasaka were both found dead by residents. It's however suspected that Salongo could have killed himself after strangling Nalongo to death. There was overpowering sorrow and shock by residents of Chirinyabigo in Ibunamwaya Wakiso district following the death of Nalongo Anit Nasaka and her husband Salongo Nsubuga Dennis. We recover the body of uh, uh, one Nasaka. Uh, Nasaka Anit, uh, commonly known as Nalongo, a resident of Kanara Zone Ibunamwaya division in uh, Wakiso district. Uh, this is after we received information from uh, uh, the neighbors of Nasaka uh, who were worried that uh, the child was crying 
continuously inside their house and uh, there was suspicion uh, about the matter since she has always moved with her child to her workplace. So we came in and uh, got access to the house. And fortunately, we found her lying dead in the bathroom. I uh, believe to have been murdered by the husband, uh, Dennis Nsubuga. It's alleged that Nasaka was strangled to death by her husband with whom they have a number of children before taking cover fearing revenge from relatives and neighbors. As fate would have it, the tragedy came full circle when Salong Nsubuga used a rope to take his life as well. <laughs> Dennis Subuga yesterday was on the run, but uh, to our dismay, early today in the morning, as we were still on the hunt for the suspect, uh, we received information of a hanging body in the same areas of Kanara uh, uh, from uh, the chairman who informed us that Dennis uh, Sobuga, who was missing, is currently hanging on a tree. Kampala Metropolitan Police Deputy Spokesman Luka Wasijire confirmed the fatal deaths, urging Ugandans to desist from acts of impunity no matter the trials they face. If the murder of uh, the wife was as a result of domestic violence, because at many times the LOCs had uh, intervened in their matter, uh, but unfortunately the police had not. So we appeal to members of the public to always seek for uh, professional help through these matters, through the LOCs, through the police, and through other uh, ways that can cause a lasting solution to what uh, might turn dire. Neighbors suspect that the two could have had misunderstandings after Subuga's deportation from Dubai where he had gone after selling off a family shop. Ivan Juko, Joel Vubia, for UBC News. And the Ministry of Health has advised the public to be more vigilant in regards to the Ebola virus disease. The Director General Ministry of Health, Dr. Henry Mwebeza, confirms that cases have been identified in Kampala and Wakiso. So as of today, we have 95 cases. By yesterday, we had 90. We got five cases in Mobende. We haven't got any other cases elsewhere apart from Movende. Out of the 95 cases, we have Skiste in Movende. Uh, Kampala is 12, uh, Wakiso is 3, making 15 in Kampala Metropolitan. Uh, what we wanted to emphasize is that when people get suspicious, and I think they have Ebola, the best thing is to go to a hospital. The best thing is to seek assistance from a hospital. We find it a bit of carelessness when somebody is sick and rushes to his family, where you are really suspicious that you have Ebola and you go home. You are exposing your, your family to Ebola and you are putting them at a very, very high risk. So we advise the first thing you should do is to avoid going home. Go to a hospital where you can be identified and helped. We have also insisted that all contacts in Kampala will have to be isolated. We are trying to identify more quarantine centers. Any contact in Kampala will have to be quarantined. We are not allowing any home isolation for any Ebola suspect. Meanwhile, a section of councillors of Leader City West Division have petitioned the Ministry of Local Government to express a vote of no confidence in their speaker. In a petition signed by 31 councillors out of 42, the councillors accused the speaker of incompetence, misconduct and abuse of office. There was a tight security deployment or to lay the petition in a meeting chaired by the deputy town clerk and the petition was later uh, I beg your pardon, that's 
a meeting chaired by the deputy town clerk. Let's take a look at those details. At least 31 councillors of Lira City West Division have penned their signatures on a petition raised by Taiso C. Councillor Samuel Aka. Let us proceed if I'm of air electric, just go straight yeah. for the If the petition is saying that we are not in the council meeting, I have the invitation here saying council meeting. That's one of your documents. Huh? What is it? In a council meeting chaired by the clerk to council, the councillors laid a petition to censor their speaker Daniel Okello, accusing him of misconduct, incompetence, and abuse of office. <laughs> The controversial meeting took place under tight security deployment in and around the hall. The petition to be delivered to the Ministry of Local Government was escorted by police out of the division headquarters. <laughs> With our intelligence, we were informed that uh, the division was to be attacked. So why could I sit in the office when I've got intelligence regarding this gun? So I had to be on ground personally myself. What the councillors deliberate doesn't matter to him. It's not important. He has reduced our councillors, the honourable councillors, to nothing. He rules according to his own interest, not what the councillors. But in a circumstance where the speakers failed, obviously censorship will not be avoided. I feel it's a good move. So when this matter was forwarded to me, it was now incumbent upon myself to cause a meeting. The Ministry of Local Government Publicist Asavia Nampandu confirmed the team were at the ministry to meet the minister. Uh, I confirmed that there were some four people from the University of Division who had come and were just about the minister. We have taken uh, a concern. Under the umbrella of the Urban Speakers Association, the speakers condemned the move, saying the clerk has upped the powers of the speaker and that the process was marred with illegalities. It is a process which I believe is dead on arrival. And I want to clearly and confidently state that the law does not provide for, it does not clearly provide for the removal of a person of the speaker from that office. And it is contempt of the council for the town clerk to call for the meeting where the speaker is in the existence. That is an abuse of office. The town clerk himself must be penalized for this. If it, if it comes to pass, then that means uh, it will be creating very dangerous precedent to all the speakers of Uganda. And as a speakers association, we are very concerned about it. We are following Ed Yolwa, UBC News. The World Food Programme has handed over food items to government in support of the school feeding programme in Karamoja region. The car and nine motorcycles, computers and other items are meant to facilitate government in ensuring the goal of easy mobility in monitoring the school feeding programme in Karamoja sub-region. Uh, items were received by State Minister Primary Education, Dr. Joyce Moriko Kaducho. The school feeding program is part of the long and short term solution to hunger in Karamoja and entails providing food to children for better education. State Minister Primary Health Care Dr. Joyce Moriko Kaduchu, while receiving the items, said there are high levels of food insecurity in Karamoja with children often hit the hardest. The number of the learning institutions and the learning facilities have drastically increased in Karamoja sub region. The challenges has also been one of the key challenges is mobility to reach the diff hard to reach places. And that is why today we see the great gift of motorcycles. Previously there were old motorcycles that we are given to this program. And of course that was way back in 2001. Kaducho commended World Food Program for putting much emphasis on children of Karamoja and asked for more support. She said the motorcycles will make it easier for government field teams to coordinate and monitor the school feeding program. This offer, we are going to see increase and in regular supervision. We are going to see improvement in quality of reporting and we are going to see really proper coordination and programming because of this gift that we are going to receive. 
World Food Program country representative Abdirahman Meigag said they are collaborating with government for long-term and sustainable solutions to Karamoja. Abdirahman said strong registration and monitoring systems have been put in place to ensure people get the support they need. As WFP, we reiterate our commitment to working with the government to ensure that the people of Karamoja and indeed everyone in Uganda has enough nutrition as food by 2030. We believe that investments in education, nutrition, agriculture and school feeding can help in our road to zero hunger because they have the capacity to provide balanced meals to pupils and students within our schools. World Food Program is working with farmers to give them lifelong skills on how to produce good quality food for sale, hence creating employment so that Kaye, UBC News. So, I'm here to announce that the MTN Kampala Marathon is back. And this year, we are running for babies. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Uh, to be clear, I am not talking about a baby. <laughs> no. <laughs> and neither am I talking about a baby. <laughs> I am talking about these small dollars. <laughs> Run for babies in the MTN Kampala Marathon on Sunday, 20th November 2022. Dial star 165 star 77 hash or use the Momo app to register. The Ministry of Health informs the public that there are confirmed cases of Ebola in Uganda. We, however, urge the public not to panic as the situation is being managed. The Ministry of Health further reminds the public to be on the lookout for any persons who may show signs and symptoms of Ebola. These include high body temperature, abdominal pains, diarrhea, vomiting, bleeding from the body openings such as the nose, eyes, and mouth. Please inform the nearest health worker immediately if you see anyone with these signs and symptoms. To prevent Ebola from spreading further, please take the following preventive measures. Regular washing of hands with water and soap. Avoid handshaking and hugging. Avoiding any contact with any suspected Ebola patients. Any person who dies suddenly should not be buried but reported to the nearest health worker or LC1 immediately. For further information, please call the Ministry of Health toll-free number on 0800 000066 or send a free SMS to your report on 8500. This message is from the Ministry of Health with support from UNICEF and World Health Organization. Do you need data collection services, data analysis and reporting, monitoring and evaluation systems? Then contact Mold Technologies, a professional research firm that has provided many organizations with timely research solutions for over 15 years. For more information, visit www.mt.co.ug or call us on 0704-913-399 or 0782-602-963. Visit our office in Kampala at Sayuni Complex in Tinder, Mood Technologies, your professional research firm.
A good school doesn't tolerate violence against children. Because a good school equals a better life. Raising Voices. Welcome back. You are still watching News Tonight. Local and international researchers have challenged uh, to position the education sector as a major export in the world. State Minister for Higher Education, Dr. John Chrysostom Mayingo, says there is need to focus on coming up with strong quality assurance mechanisms that will enable the education system to compete globally. Government has established an innovation fund to nurture research and sea level innovations, with researchers being encouraged to take advantage of the endowment. As the Treasury, as more resources get into the Treasury, we are opening up. UMI will be considered Jumbo and many other, even including private universities, will, be, will benefit from that fund, that uh, innovation fund. Uh, but of course, we are convinced as government those of us who are in government, that sustainable development can only be supported with policies that are well researched. Ugandan scientists, including those in universities, have been involved in basic research, like Kiramoto's. Uganda Management Institute has organized a third international conference on governance and service delivery in developing economies, which has drawn researchers, academicians, eminent scholars and practitioners to share knowledge. The compliant uh, governance systems that can promote sustainable development in our country, first of all in Uganda and all over the world. You know, research generates knowledge and it brings out issues that people don't know. And these issues inform the decision-making process. So what we are doing in this conference is to generate ideas out of the researches and the missions have done so that we can inform the decision-making systems of this country and the other countries all over the world. State Minister for Higher Education, Dr. John Chrysostom Muyengo, wants researchers to support the Education Review Commission research with their input for the good of the education system. To focus not only on expanding access, but also ensuring that we put in place strong quality assurance mechanisms that will enable the product of our education system to compete or out to compete at the global stage. This conference also ensures a relationship between academics and public administration. I'm Navka Farida in Kampala. With an aim of reducing prevalence of birth defects, the Ministry of Health, together with other civil society, have urged mothers of the nation to embrace food fortification and dietary diversity during pregnancy. This was communicated during the commemoration of the World Spina Bifida and Hydrocephalus Day 2022. 170 children are born with neurotube defects in Uganda annually, a thing that has left many mothers abandoning their children in hospitals, hallways and roadsides. The Minister of Health, together with other civil society organizations, have commemorated the World Spino Bifida and Hydrocephalus Day 2022. What happens is that when people miss their period, they would want to wait for another month to confirm that actually they are pregnant. And by that time, by the time now you come, you're already over six, six weeks, which is beyond 28 days. So if they, by that time the defect would have already formed. So we urge that when, the moment you miss the period, visit the health facility, and then you can be given, I, I mean, folic acid supplementation. At a function held in Kampala, Dr. Oral Charles, the Director of Clinical Services, on behalf of the Minister for Health, Dr. Jen Ruther Cheng, highlighted in the causes of the spina bifida disease? 70% of the neurotube defects are attributable to folic acid. Others to environment, others are genetic. Dr. Oraro says government is working hard towards curbing on such defects in children in the country through putting up health facilities with adequate resources. This year, parliament approved the financing for city scan. So we think that for, to effectively use the scans in regional hospitals, 
then we also have to deploy neurosurgeons, you know. So when you have the neurosurgeon, the general referral hospitals, then these services can be handled at a regional referral hospital. Ruth Najuma from Sipina Bifida Association, Uganda, says there is need for mothers to take care of their children born with a disease since they encounter a lot of challenges in the community. The World Spinobifida and Hydrocephalus Day 2022 was set under the theme, a call for national action to reduce the prevalence of birth defects through food fortification, folic acid supplementation, and that are diverse in the country. Rebecca Nantongo, Susan Nabugude, UBC News. And with that, we'll take a quick break. When we return, business news, this is News Tonight. He's ready. Wait a second, not everybody. Come on, dude, it's the FIFA World Cup. You're going to lose your seat, the ritual seat, the lucky one. Losing more than a seat, your team is going to lose. Where are you, dude? The match is about to start. Your friends won't hold out much longer. Excuse me, excuse me. Finally, everything is in the right place. Hey, other hand. And you, do you have everything you need to believe? MDM joins the people of Keralur to celebrate the 12th coronation anniversary of the King of Keralur, His Royal Majesty Ubim Philip Rauni III in October. At MTN, we believe that we only succeed if the communities in which we operate succeed. And so, we're happy to join the people and well wishes of the people of Keralur in promoting social cultural programs of the Ubim. Walegu Mugisa ni Ubimu ku Keralur. Did you know that women constitute majority of Uganda's population? However, the high numbers do not match the level of participation of girls and young women in sports. Some of the challenges contributing to low female participation in sports include negative cultural norms, lack of parental support, sexual harassment, gender stereotypes, and equal recognition and remuneration, among others. Everyone has a responsibility to encourage a girl or young woman join the sport of her choice, support girls or young women in active sports to excel, above all, make sports safe, violence-free and inclusive. This message is brought to you by the Mentoring and Empowerment Program for Young Women, MEMPRO. Did you know that a cashless, secure and convenient lifestyle is possible with Airtel Money Pay? Pay for your goods and services in the following simple steps. Dial star 185 star 9 hush. Enter the merchant ID. Enter the amount. Enter payment reference, for example, school items. Please enter PIN to confirm. You will receive a confirmation message for a successful transaction. Airtel Money. Instant, secure, borderless. Out of the 36,941 candidates that sat the UPTEP examinations, 28,050, which is actually 76%, successfully acquired all competencies in their respective trades. Female candidates contributed 32%, which is 8,948, to this successful completion, compared to male candidates with 68%. Candidates of the modular assessment under the Uganda Community Polytechnic Certificate programs equally performed well at 81% pass rate. The increase in number of candidates is attributed to continued advocacy for technical vocational education and training skills, introduced system of modernized assessment, and awakening of citizens towards vocational skills acquisition. 
the Executive Secretary Uganda Business Technical Examinations Board, Onesmas Oyesije, however, still counts some candidates for examination malpractices. He has put in place measures to prevent cases of examination malpractice. However, some candidates still risk trying their luck and tempt the board. The board, through its examination security committee, noted a reduction in malpractice cases from 60 in April, May 2022 to 33 in July, August 2022 examination series. The State Minister for Education, Dr. J.C. Moingo, applauds UBTEB for carrying out a successful assessment. Moingo says government is ready for enacting the law to streamline the role of technical business and vocational education in the country. We have, uh, we, we, th there has been a lot of effort in trying to amend that act. But of course you know it's amendment of an, of an, act, of an act is a process. We began at the department level. Any time cabinet will give us space on the order paper, our TV, the amendment of the TVET Act will be discussed and after that we'll move to Parliament. The chairperson UPTEP board, Dr. Engineer Silva Mugisha, appealed to government to increase on UPTEP funding, especially the completion of the construction of assessment center. The total cost of the project was estimated at 25.6 billion. And we are now requesting we are requesting that the ceiling of 6.2 billion should be maintained. We heard that this is going to be cut by 40% and if this is done, it is going to affect the construction process. The feedback from stakeholders on module assessment with its flexibility in training and assessment require more financial support. And Shema district leadership has sacked government to intervene uh, for, beg your pardon, has asked government to intervene for the improvement of the National Agriculture Resource Research and Development Center located in Rubare Station. The district chairperson, Tumijuke Jemima, uh, says ever since the district allocated 70 acres of land for mulberry farming and silk factory in 2017, there is no visible production. In 2017, government, in a partnership with the Tropical Institute of Development Innovations, set up a sericulture technologies and innovation project in Shema for the household wealth creation and employment. Some of the workers at National Sericulture and Development Center Rubale Station in Shema District say that the factory mechanical installation is almost at 85%. Although the production process is pending vis-a-vis -vis the availability of mobile raw material. So I am appealing to the President of the Republic of Uganda, uh, Mr. M7, to uh, put much more emphasis on our project. Let him look into the matter so that uh, we can have our science technology hub, CIRIC uh, in Shema and the rest of the districts where in order to for the, for the people to get money, for their welfare, in order to get, uh, in Uganda to have a silk clothes, a silk clothes, a silk fabric, instead of wearing the bomb and the cadet. Workers from this factory said challenges of poor management of mulberry gardens and cocoons are related to the ladies of 43 billion syringes appropriated by parliament for this financial year. <laughs> The director, monitoring and evaluation tropical institute of development innovations, Aine Robson, expressed the concern over government's funds being paid out to Chinese expatriates to date following the agreement signed for mechanical installation and impact skills training to workers. Of machines for different areas, uh, we, we still have a commitment with the Chinese who are to train, to train our staff here to operate these machines by ourselves, to even fix them in case of anything. 
but this is an ongoing commitment so as long as uh, uh, we, we have to to keep paying them we keep paying them because uh, we committed we keep paying them they have not come here and all this was uh, budgeted in this uh, funding that has delayed the chairperson Shema District to Mijuche Jemima said the land for sericulture project allocated by the municipality is not yet put into proper use. So we have even a land where we are to buy that land so that we can do what? We can grow more marble. We know what it means to lose such a such a such a project. So I appeal to the government to intervene and get us together and so that we see something good coming out of Rubai. Robert Katamba, UBC News. And now in sports, the 2022 Uganda Golf Open Championship Series continued with the Pro AM event at the Par 72 Lake Victoria Serena Golf Resort and Spa Course. Over 200 golfers, both professionals and amateurs, were drawn with two tee offs uh, on the first and tenth tee boxes. Unlike other competitions, golfers were drawn in teams named after the sponsors and key sponsors of the event. Uh, we managed to catch up with the main sponsors of the event, uh, APSA Bank, that had the managing director, Mumba Kalifungwa, Kenya's legendary professional, Dismas Indiza, uh, Alex Mukasa, and Security Minister Jim Mukwesi. First of all, I expected to play better golf today, right, <laughs> at a personal level. But uh, on a serious note, I think going into the pro um, is another opportunity for us to support the uh, good game of golf, to see the competition in terms of the uh, outcome of the quality of players that come out, and just to try and promote the sport to a level where we have more players playing at an international stage. So coming into the pro -am, I hope to see a number of uh, you know individuals that have played today qualify for the Magic Open. Um, as we did last year, we expect to send about 10 players this year to go and play the Magic Open in 2023. So coming into it, I uh, expected to see an improvement, of course, in the quality of play, the, uh, the, the, the participation in terms of members. So really those were the expectations. First of all, I had a very good company. <laughs> I played with the gentlemen. We had a good round because it's good, the weather was good. Yes, don't ask about golf. <laughs> this one is a good, this, this is a good course, golf course. They have maintained the course, everything is nice, everything is good. They, it's like a professional golf, golf course. Even the greens, it's like a Kenya Open. If you play Kenya Open, it's the same now. But you know, the, now these greens are so soft, but the fairway is hard, you know. As if you feel patting, you can feel it well. And the Uganda Women Rugby 15s team, uh, the Lady Cranes, started the 2022 Rugby Africa Women's Cup on a high with a win against Zambia in the opening game of the Paul B playoffs. The match played at Motesa the second stadium in Wankulukuku so hosts Uganda came on strong from the start and dominated most of the game scoring 36 points against Zambia's 17 in a game where Charlotte Mudola and team captain Peace Lekuru were very instrumental in Uganda's win. Uganda's campaign at the 2022 Rugby Africa Women's Cup Pool B Playoffs has kicked off on a high. The team registered a 36-17 point win against Zambia in the opening game played at Mutesa 2 Stadium in Wankuluku. Team Uganda rose to the occasion from the start, posting a 32-0 scoreline at halftime. Angela Nanyonga, Charlotte Mudola and Peace Lekuru were instrumental in the early dominant play for Team Uganda. It's a very important win because Uganda women have never gone so far in the World Cup qualifier. So this is very important to us, especially we put in a lot of work. I'm very proud of the performance, but it all comes down to the team, uh, to the team and everything we put together. So I'm proud of myself and the team. Uh, we had to first deal with Zambia, 
which is a good uh, start for us. Now the next one will be Kenya because a win is very important in this group. There's no slacking, everything up to just keep moving forward. So this means a lot to the team and the players. Though left helpless in the first half, Zambia garnered 17 points in the second half of the game. We didn't stick to, we didn't play to our initial game plan, the game plan we had uh, uh, come up with. Uh, apparently the weather was a bit too hot for the ladies that couldn't contain because we haven't had enough time to acclimatize. Uh, however, if you saw the second half, there was some kind of acclimatization. We started getting into, into, into our game plan. Up next. Both teams will play Kenya in their next games, Zambia on the 29th of October and Uganda on the 2nd of November. The winner of the single round ribbon games in this pool, like the other three pools, will progress to the Rugby Africa Women's Cup semi-finals to be played next year. I, I believe Kenya is more physical than uh, Uganda, if, if my homework does me well. Uh, by then, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'd have acclimatized to the weather here, the humid weather here. Uh, so good Kenya, good game. We'd love to go bottom of the list. Uh, uh, this win gives us a very good momentum going into uh, the second game against Kenya. If we had lost, probably the girls' uh, spirits would be uh, quite low. But uh, this is a good momentum for us, and we'll capitalize and take on this opportunity to beat Kenya. Grace Joyce Kemgisa, UBC News. And St. Lawrence University has come from behind to edge two-time champions Macquarie University Business School 2-1 in their Pepsi University Football League semi-final first leg at Kavule Ground. After a barren first half, Benjamin Nasa gave visitors Macquarie University Business School the lead in the 57th minute, but Bruno Bunyaga cancelled it out in the 67th before Michael Kayongo's 73rd strike secured the victory for St. Lawrence. The two meet again for the second leg on the 1st of November at Nakawa. Action in the Pepsi University Football League continues this Thursday with former champions Uganda Matters University uh, Nkosi looking to overturn the first leg 1-0 loss against defending champions Uganda Christian University with hope that home advantage in Nkosi will be pivotal. But today we are so say about Bato, Babeda excited, or Rome window go about and Tabaikam Sau in Goliate via Goro, that you want to end about that concentrating about Xamara Sau de Bungi, never job won't go back on Peter, Catbagenzo, Kuda, Nabachamuse. We move in the goalkeeper for Collins. Let me think about my room. May I told you in the draws, I'll face whoever comes my way. Things to, to do concerned about Chambogo. I had preparations for Chambogo, but then they told me you are versing mobs. Still, I got solutions for mobs. So let me talk about mobs. We leave Chambogo aside. Congratulations, Coach. Well, and that does it for news tonight. Thank you for sticking with us throughout the hour. I am Rhoda Ngonzi. We'll leave you with Daphne Kavasita with a weather update. For this weather update, I'm Daphne Kavasit and Samba from Uganda National Meteorological Authority. Thanks for joining UBC. Most parts of the country today had sunny conditions both in the morning and also in the afternoon. Those are a few areas, for example, western part of the country, some few areas around western part of Lake Victoria, we had thunder showers. We are getting winds that are coming in from Sahara, contributing to the dry conditions that we're having especially in the northern part of our country. Tomorrow we're expecting to start the day with a Isolated showers around Lake Victoria and some few areas like Kampala. Other parts of Uganda we're expecting sunny intervals. For example, central part of central part of Uganda. Western Uganda we're expecting sunny intervals. When we go to the eastern part of the country, we are still expecting sunny intervals. The northern part of the country we're expecting sunny conditions apart from Marua where we're expecting isolated showers. Later in the afternoon we're expecting central part of the country to have 
Sunny, in Tavos, apart from some few areas like in Mobende, where we're expecting isolated showers, temperatures rise to 32 degrees Celsius. That is in the central parts of our country. Western Uganda, we are expecting 30 degrees Celsius, 32 degrees Celsius. That is in Kasese with isolated showers. Eastern Uganda, we are expecting 30 degrees, sorry, 32 degrees Celsius. That is in Tororo with sunny conditions, but at sunny intervals around Jinja with 31 degrees Celsius. Sunny conditions are expected to prevail in the northern part of the country with temperatures rising to 31 degrees Celsius, that is in Kotido. In Narua, we are still expecting isolated showers with temperatures rising to 27 degrees Celsius. Going beyond Uganda, we are expecting Paris to have sunny conditions, Beijing, Johannesburg and Qatar, we are expecting cloudy conditions with some few areas like Johannesburg to have thunder showers with temperatures rising to 16 degrees Celsius, that is in Beijing and it's a bit cold. That's what we had in us still continue tuning into UBC. Have a blessed evening. Inspiring Uganda.